Arfield. What a bowling! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently. And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end. Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the It quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Can he go on the outside? Comes inside. He's had a shot. Oh, what a goal. Manuel Benson once more. That is top class. Burnley have done it. Fantastic. Clarence deserve the championship title. They've been the best side throughout the campaign. Burnley have won the second tier. What a fantastic achievement. The players have been magnificent. Hello everyone and welcome along to another episode of the Lord Down On here on the Turfcast Podcast YouTube channel and of course the Turfcast Podcast with me, Joe Redmond. And that can only mean one thing. Obviously we've got another signing in through the door. I'm sure you're all aware of it now, uh, to be honest. It was announced uh, this morning at 9am. Unusual for Burnley to do a 9am announcement. I was expecting maybe, you know, Redmond at, at 1 and then Trafford at, at, at 3, something like that. Or, or, you know, some more in. Who knows, I'm recording this at 2 o'clock by the time this is done and, and out o'clock late this evening. We could have somebody else through the door, but time will tell. Um, but of course, we're going to talk about Zeke Amdouni. Um, of course, we've got him in today, as I've said. It came out of nowhere, didn't it, really? Um, we've seen all this talk about Jacques and Hamer and all these other players. Um, and this one, nobody had said anything about it. Then all of a sudden, it was announced a couple of days ago by, uh, I can't remember the German, so I, I saw sort of call it first, somebody from Foot Marker, uh, if I remember rightly. Uh, and then two days later, it's done. And I can't believe it's actually been done before Trafford because that seems to have been, been on for quite a while. Um, although I'm, I'm believing that Trafford will be announced pretty soon as well. Maybe maybe tomorrow I'm hearing at the minute, um, but hopefully they stick it out a bit earlier than that and I'm wrong. Um, but of course, the idea of the law down on, and we do need it for this transfer, don't we, to be honest. But the idea of the law down on is to, is to get somebody on who knows what they're talking about when it comes to the player. Sometimes a podcaster, sometimes a journalist. Uh, today we've got somebody a little bit different though, but some impressive credentials um, I'll introduce him in a second and bring him on in a second. But just to, to let you know of his credentials, he is the chief football scout for Switzerland at Football Manager. Great game, by the way. Um, he is the area manager for Switzerland of TransferMarket.com. I'm sure you've all been on that website a million times. I, know I, I spend a lot of time on it. And he is, <clears throat> excuse me, a sports coordinator at a third division so, I nearly said Swedish then, um, Switzerland uh, Football Club. So, yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on, Oliver. There he is, Oliver Zeziger. How are you doing, mate? Hi, Joe. I'm fine. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for coming on, mate. I know I, I know. I asked you about 90 minutes ago, so, you know, it's really good to, to somebody to be so flexible and, and to come on. Um, but, yeah, going into Zeki then, obviously, um, it came out of nowhere a couple of days ago, but... He's one of them players, obviously, he's been playing in the Swiss Super League uh, for FC Basel. Obviously, that's where we got him from. Um, undisclosed fee, but joined for a five-year deal. Um, talk to me, what, what type of football player is he? Obviously, we know he's a striker, but what, what, what type of striker is he? So, he isn't really just a striker. He's more like the deep-lying forward type, kind of guy. He often played mm -hmm. behind the centre-forward in Basel. And uh, he is a uh, technically strong footballer. Um, he has a nose for open spaces, so he can find open spaces with or without the ball quite easily. He can also assist on goals. Um, uh, he's two-footed, which is great for his finishing and his passing ability. It makes him less uh, transparent. And overall, um, he's a very talented footballer who came from a couple of years ago from the fourth division in Switzerland. He's not an academy product. So uh, he's one, he was at the Servette Geneva Academy, but uh, he, I think he dropped out at the age of uh, 12 or something. 
but he's not one of those usual um, academy footballers who are very well uh, formed in terms of tactics, technic, uh, technical ability, and, and so on. Um, he's more like the street footballer type, uh, one that's rare nowadays. So yeah. and he, he scores goals with uh, left foot, right foot headers. Uh, he scores goals on every level. So he's an excellent piece of business, I believe, for Burnley. Yeah, excellent. Uh, very, very promising. Obviously, he was labelled as the Swiss Messi um, we've seen uh, recently uh, uh, by the press over there. Is that what you mean when you say like a street footballer then? It is a type of player that will keep the ball really close control and like you said, nip in and out of spaces with the ball uh, and just and dribble with the ball and things like that? First of all, you won't do him any favours comparing him to Messi. But uh, uh, friends of mine who uh, have the football uh, analytics website, Footballytics, who made a comparison, what's the closest uh, profile, player profile, not in terms of ability, but in terms of playing style to Zeki Amdouni, and that is, that is Lionel Messi. Um, yeah. But obviously the comparison end there, because Messi is like uh, three to four levels uh, better above, uh, still at age uh, 35, 36 uh, above uh, Zeki Amdouni. But yeah, it's a good comparison. He drops deep. He, get, he, he tries to get the ball in midfield. He tries to uh, orchestrate uh, and uh, orchestrate the type uh, of uh, or the uh, passing style. And uh, he tries to get the ball uh, to his teammates. And then he arrives late in the box uh, where open spaces are, usually on the blind side of the ball. So uh, he's a very dangerous player um, in the final third. Yeah. Um... Excellent. Um, one thing I was going to ask as well is um, how far do you think you can go? Because like, obviously he's still quite young at the minute, obviously. So there's a lot of, uh, not not sort of like, not not pressure, but there's a lot of talk about him already at such a young age. Is he one of the players that could go to the very top? Because some of the stuff that some FC Basel fans have been saying on the Burnley hashtags and stuff on Twitter is he might only be at Burnley for a couple of years until until like a top six Premier League club or one of the big European clubs coming. So how how high do you expect him to get in his career? I'm a bit more conservative uh, than those Basel fans. I mean, first of all, it's about adaptation to the Premier League football, which is two levels above the Swiss Super League. Ob yeah. Obviously, he also uh, performed well in the Conference League against opponents like uh, Nice or like... Uh, uh, um, but those are not like your A level uh, European clubs mm -hmm. as well. Um, I think he has some deficits when it comes to physicality. So, uh, in terms of athlet uh, athletic ability, he needs to uh, improve a bit, maybe uh, also work on his speed. But in terms of reading the game, tactical uh, movement, uh, technical movement, he's already very good. So I can see him move on in a couple of years. But for now, uh, the, world, the most important thing is for him to adapt well to life in Britain and to life in the Premier League. Yeah, well, that brings us on perfectly to the next question then. I was going to ask, do you think he's capable then of playing in the Premier League? Because the Premier League is known as the most physical league in Europe. And you've already mentioned there that his physicality is probably a little bit lacking. Do you think he, do you think he will adapt to the Premier League pretty quickly or do you think he might take a few months? I think so. I mean, there's a reason Burnley got him um, and because Vincent Company obviously likes him a lot. But yeah. uh, the thing when I talk about physicality, he's not small, um, he's not weak, but he just needs to put in his body more uh, from time to time um, to keep the ball, to cover the ball or uh, to get to, to a header. Um, that's, that's what I mean. And also his speed is not the best, but uh, in a deep lying forward role where he can play with his face to the goal and he, there he doesn't need that much speed. He's not the one who does the deep runs. He's the one who passes to the deep runner. So I think he will adapt. And obviously, uh, what you what you got him for is goals. And I believe he will score goals as well. But you need to grant him a certain period of adaptation because the difference in level is, is, is steep. Yep, fair enough. Uh, you mentioned Vincent Company there as well. Obviously, Zeki mentioned Vincent Company a lot in his in his interview in his video. So it's a big reason why he's joined Burnley. Do you, th do you think they'll, they'll work together well? Vincent Company, obviously, a big name across across Europe and, and in England as well. Um, and Zeki's obviously very happy to be working with him. Do you, do you think he's a good person to be working with, Zeki? Yeah, I think so. Uh, what I've heard about Vincent Company as a coach, I mean, confirms what he was as a player. Um, he's just a good character, uh, one who understands the footballer. 
and uh, he also speaks French like Zeki Amdouni, so uh, that's an advantage as well, so they, they both can, because, you know, uh, Zeki's uh, English is not the best, so maybe uh, he's happy to have someone to talk in French to. Yeah, fair enough. That, that actually ties in nicely with my next question as well, because I'm going to ask, like, what type of person is Zeki then? Is, is he quite reserved? Is he quiet? The reason why I'm asking that is because I know a couple of players, um, Lau Foster especially, who have joined recently from Europe or elsewhere in the world, they, they might have struggled to set, settle in. I know Lau Foster did an interview saying he struggled to settle in. Um, but you mentioned there that him and Vincent Company obviously will both be able to speak the same language, so that might help him settle in as well. So, but I guess my question is, first of all, uh, do you think he'll be all right at settling in? Do you think moving from from Switzerland uh, to England um, will be something that, that he can he can do and, and settle in well? And, um, yeah, do you think Vincent Company will be able to help him do that? Yeah, um, I think so. Uh, Zeki is not one uh, a, a glamour person at all. He's a... Uh... He stays with uh, stands with both feet on the on the floor, so he's a very uh, down to earth guy, uh, re reserved, calm, professional, and uh, I mean, like most Swiss, uh, we Swiss are not known for being uh, extravagant or uh, or flashy, and yeah. uh, he's he's known for being very professional and uh, taking a serious approach to playing football. So. I think he will focus on on the footballing side first, and then uh, life in England he will adapt to as well over time. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you mentioned there he's more of a, like a deep lying um, sort of like forward rather than an out and out striker. Do you think Burnley will be best to use him in kind of like the number ten role with somebody else ahead of him, so then he can supply, like you said, the assist and then chip in with the goals? Is that the best way that that we can use him? Yeah, um, look, you can play him as a centre forward, no problem. But I think his best playing position is the one behind the striker, or yeah. like in a four-four-two uh, as the second striker option. Maybe who comes to get the ball deep, as I explained before, that uh, he likes to do that to get the ball in midfield and just distribute the ball and arrive late in the box. So that's uh, that's one role, but you can play him as a center forward. He did so when he was at Lausanne um, two years ago uh, in, in, a, in a team that was never good enough to be a Super League team. He was the best player and uh, among the best scor scorers in Switzerland as a center forward, so he can do both. The only thing I wouldn't do is to play him on the wing um, because uh, he lacks the speed um, and he likes to cut inside and this makes him a bit transparent over time, uh, from time to time. Uh, he did it in Basel in spurts. He didn't do it often, but mostly he played behind the striker and did really well, especially in the second half of the season. Yep, fair enough. Uh, just looking at his international career, of course, he, he recently did play for Switzerland under 21s in the under 21 Euros. I believe he scored in the quarterfinals. Um, I saw Indeed. today. Yeah, but he's also played five games for the Switzerland senior team as well. Is he expected now to, to, to move up to the senior team after the Euros and be that, 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 that one of the main guys in the Swiss senior side? He is. Um, Switzerland is not known for their strikers. I mean, you could probably name Braylon Bolo. Maybe if we're lucky, we can name Hari Seferovic as known strikers. But uh, we don't have those. Uh, it, to the contrary, we have a lot of good, good to great goalkeepers, but we don't have good strikers. So uh, all hopes lie on him, to be honest. Um, he's the main guy going forward, I believe. Uh, and he has shown that he's capable of doing it, although it has to be said uh, against weaker opponents. So he didn't score against the bigger opponents. He's uh, only scored against weaker opponents. But if you have someone who can score against those teams, um, goals are usually hard to come by for Switzerland. So uh, we're already happy. Yeah, well, fingers crossed he does well for Switzerland. Yeah, I'm sure you've got uh, quite a lot of Swiss clarets uh, now in Burnley looking out for the, for the Swiss results um, when you're playing. Um, I just want to ask as well, how was the move gone down at FC Basel then uh, with, with, with the fans? Are they disappointed to see him leave? Have you seen? Yeah, obviously they're disappointed because uh, another good player in Andy Diouf left Toulon this season and mm -hmm. they only signed him a couple of months ago because he was loaned with a buy option from Lausanne and they uh, they took the, the option and, and signed him I think in the month of May and it was expected for him to be leaving because one more season wouldn't have made sense. Wouldn't have made sense uh, for Amduni to be staying, and Basel also needed the money, um, and that's that's why everybody was expecting him to leave. What they didn't expect him to, to be going to the Premier League because usually uh, Swiss 
good Swiss players go to the Bundesliga first and then maybe make the jump to the Premier League, like mm. Granit Xhaka, for example. And uh, in this case, uh, there were rumors around several Bundesliga clubs. And then, as you said at the beginning, came out of the blue uh, the interest from Burnley. And it was not only just an interest, it was said in the Swiss press that the deal is already done. Only the um, the, the the uh, signatures were uh, were waiting to happen. So, um, yeah, it, it's surprising, but uh, I think Basel fans uh, were really realistic with it. Uh, they they knew he would leave at the end of the season, most likely. Yeah, is there a frustration that he's gone to a team like Burnley? Obviously, new in the Premier League, obviously quite highly thought of in FC Basel, who, who do play in European competition. Um, Burnley, of course, only had recent years uh, had one trek into the Europa League, which which didn't even get to the group stage. So is, is there a bit of frustration that he's gone to Burnley? That the, or did Basel fans expect him to go into a, a bigger club? No, not at all. Uh, no frustration from Basel fans, I can see. Um, they're happy that he's gone to a Premier League team. And obviously, uh, if there's a Premier League team signing a player out straight out of Switzerland, it's not going to be a top 10, 10 team usually. And uh, they're happy mostly because of the money, obviously, because the club needs the money. <laughs> but uh, everybody thought he would go to the Bundesliga and then suddenly a Premier League club comes along. And we all know what happens when a Premier League comes along, a Premier League club comes along and the uh, asking prices gets a little bit higher. And uh, I think yeah. most of them think that Bern is a, is, a, is a good choice in a club, a newly promoted club with a talented manager. And a good yeah. playing style who, who who he will fit in uh, perfectly, I believe. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, just getting towards the end of the questions about, about Zeke. Um, 12 goals in the Swiss Super League last season. It, it'll do well to get 12 in the Premier League, do you think? Obviously, Premier League a more competitive league against, against tougher opponents. How many how many goals are you expecting him to get? Oof. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think... I think you need to temper expectations, or I need to temper expectations for Claret's fans here a bit. If he does score between 5 and 10, then that's a decent season. Because, as I said, the step up is is uh, extreme from the Swiss, uh, Swiss Super League to, to the Premier League. Uh, he may back a couple of assists here and there as well. So if he does like between 7 and... Uh, seven and 13 scoring points during the season i'd be happy if i were him and if i were you then then we'll see for the second season how how this will go but uh, i think uh, he won't score you 15 goals he, he might score you 15 goals i mean why not but uh, ad adaptation will be will be hard for him at the beginning and uh, i think that uh, we need to temper our expectations here a bit yeah fair enough uh, just to round it off um, a little bit with Zeke. Uh, I've got a quote here from the Scouted Football Twitter uh, account, uh, who also have scoutedfootball.com. They say, I'm doing is undoubtedly one of the most intriguing forward prospects outside of Europe's top five leagues. Of course, this was written before he was in one of Europe's top five leagues. Um, he's a deceptively good dribbler and ball carrier that explodes out of congestion and with a quick burst of speed. And that, of course, similar to what you sort of said um, earlier. So, like, like, like I said, are we expecting him to run with the ball quite a lot then and uh, and, and try and bring others into play? Is, is that the main thing that we'll be looking for? Is that his main strength? Yeah, I think so. I think he will try to get the ball deep, then uh, run with it or pass it and then receive it uh, outside just the, the 16 yard box or 18 yard box or inside even. Uh, and I think he will also progress the ball up, up the pitch. I think that's his main strength. And then. Uh, he will try to uh, pass to a, uh, a winger or at the centre forward to position himself then in a better position to finish. Yeah, fair enough. Excellent. I always like to ask people when they come on the show as well, uh, especially people from the continent, because Burnley is traditionally, like I said, a, a smaller club. Uh, and, and we just find it insane at the minute that, you know, Swiss journalists and Belgian journalists are all talking about Burnley. So I, I want to get your opinion on, on Burnley as a club and, and, and what they've done over the last 18 months. Of course, losing Sean Dyche as manager, played in a certain way, had to sell, I think, six, well, let go of 16 senior players was the start of the, the championship season last season. Broke company and did very well, obviously, ran away with the league. Now back in the Premier League. What are your thoughts on, on Burnley as a club and what they've done over the last 18 months? First off, I had to look up where the city of or the town of Burnley is on the map yeah. today. <laughs> um, no, but uh, for me, as as I'm uh, in in scouting and recruitment, I don't have time to watch many like championship or Premier League games over the weekend. So 
uh, my impression is still the the Sean Dyche days uh, and yeah. the, the tall the tall strikers, tall centre backs, and so on. Um, but what I've read about Burnley really, really intrigues me. Uh, the playing style seems to be completely different from what what you've played before under under Sean Dyche. And I, I believe I, if I manage, I will watch at least one game this season uh, to see how Zeki is doing. Although I will keep up with the press, obviously, and Twitter and yeah. so on. And uh, yeah, I will try to watch a game to see how uh, Vincent Company sets up his boys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I look forward to hearing what you have to say then uh, about that Burnley game because it's if, if we set up anything like we did last season, it's going to be a very, very exciting game. Uh, very exciting games to watch. A little bit interested how we're going to do it in the Premier League because you know we, we attacked pretty much everybody last season. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see, especially against Manchester City on the opening game of the season, um, if we just go all out attack against these sort of sides. You would suspect not. Uh, Vincent's not stupid, um, but obviously, what you, you mentioned, we mentioned Vincent Company already. You said he's a, a talented, young, up and coming manager. I just want to get your thoughts on him as well um, as a manager. Um, do you think he can go to the very top? There's a feeling in Burnley that he's going to win titles potentially as a manager, even manage at the Belgian national team. Like he's, he's like you said, he's talented, he's up and coming, and I think he can get he can get to the top. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. Um, I didn't see many games with him as a manager. I, I met him once uh, when he was coach at Anderlecht, I believe. And uh, yeah. uh, I met him once in a, in a hotel lobby in, in Belgium. And uh, we, we briefly spoke for like five to ten minutes. A very nice guy. I always loved his interviews when he was a player. Um, he seemed like outstandingly smart. And uh, mm. I think he'll do well if he doesn't overcomplicate things at the beginning. Later, when you have the experience, you can overcome or you can complicate, uh, overcomplicate things. But uh, right now, I think he, he keeps it simple, and uh, he will go. He will go far, I believe. And he's like a multilingual, so it's like uh, yeah. how, how many languages does he speak? Six or seven, I believe. So it's a lot. That's, that's yeah. a huge advantage because nowadays a coach doesn't. I think sixty to seventy percent of coaching is man management, and if you can reach everybody in their native language, I think that's a huge advantage for him. No, I agree. I, I do think he's going to that. We're, we're very lucky to have him here at Berlin, and if we can keep him for the majority of this season, uh, or all of this season, should I say, that, that, then again, I'll be happy. Yeah, yeah. If, if we start if we start off very well, I will be a little bit worried, um, especially if some of the top clubs get rid of their managers. Um, but Oliver, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you show. Like I said, I do appreciate it. I know I asked you around 90 minutes before we actually recorded this interview. So thank you so much for, for jumping on. It's a pleasure. You just want to let everyone know where they can find you and the stuff that you produce on Twitter? Yeah, I'm uh, on Twitter at A-U-L-I-T underscore Z. So uh, you can follow me, uh, hit me up, whatever you want. And uh, you also say, uh, told the, the viewers are uh, my my ventures that I'm into at the moment. So uh, yeah, I support uh, football managers, support transfer marks, support FC Beal, and uh, you'll be good. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having uh, me. No, Sorry. you're welcome. Football managers, obviously, everyone knows football manager. Um, yeah. so it, it, it must be a great crack uh, doing stuff like that for football manager. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on, though, mate. Good guest, good talker, but an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for listening. If you're listening on the podcast, hopefully there'll be another video up very soon um, with James Trafford and then another one again not long after that with Nathan Redmond, potentially again not long after that um, with Andros Townsend as well. Who knows? Exciting times at Burnley Football Club. But thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And I'll see you soon for the James Trafford announcement. <laughs>